Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over Forza Horizon 5, figuring out the best performance we can get, and maybe even discover a bit about ourselves along the way. Let me start out by saying welcome to all the new subscribers and viewers. The last video ended up bringing in a ton of you, and I really appreciate every view and sub. The only news I have today is that my patrons over at patreon.com slash cryobite33 recently got a new benefit. There is now ad-free viewing available, and I'm currently thinking about adding a Patreon-only Discord server where I'll be able to chat or answer questions, so make sure to swing by if that sounds interesting to you. As always, here's the timestamp for my recommended presets if you just want to know what to do, but I still recommend watching for context and reasoning. If you like the video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. It really helps with getting the video favored in the algorithm and shows more people how to run their favorite games and get better performance out of their deck. Starting off with my benchmark methodology, all tests were run with the in-game benchmark with completely default settings, while using the presets in-game. I also verified that the benchmark had similar performance to when I drove in regular races in-game and was practically identical to even an over-the-top event race. As such, I chose to use the built-in benchmark for simplicity of replicating results. As always, let's start out with a baseline. Nothing very surprising, thankfully, but it is the first game we've seen in a while that breaks 50 FPS out of the box. I'm really excited to see how far we can push Forza. The flip side to the good performance, however, is that without any changes, my game was crashing every few benchmarks, roughly once every 5 to 10 minutes. The frequency seemed to be based on the preset, with higher presets causing more frequent crashes. This made the game basically impossible to play when driving around. Because of this, keep in mind that this preset will be unobtainable unless you do something to fix the constant crashing. Moving on to finding a bottleneck, we can see that it's not likely going to be the CPU. It's pushed incredibly hard, but not quite to the brink. That said, the CPU gets downright toasty on higher presets. I'm not sure exactly what settings are causing it, but it's probably doing some calculations for collisions or AI. Alright, we found the bottleneck on Ultra. The GPU is absolutely redlining here and is not able to catch its breath at all. Anything we can do to give it a bit more room is likely to help on the higher presets. When looking at the memory, we can see that it's fairly reasonable in its use, although the Ultra preset is using pretty close to the most it can get. The swap fix likely won't help too much here, but we never know. The last thing I'll look at in this section is GPU power consumption. While it's unsurprising that Ultra uses 9 watts, very low and low both use about 2.5, basically nothing. It'll be interesting to see how much battery life we can squeeze out in the presets section. Okay, so before moving on, I want to say three things. First, some of the charts will look different going forward as I've updated my parser program to prevent some clipping. Second, for further tests I ended up switching to Proton7-GE38. I found that in conjunction with the next fix we will try, the crashing issue was solved. It's possible that the latest experimental will work too, but it did not for me at the time of filming. Third, Forza Horizon 5 on Steam Deck has a bug that prevents us from getting more performance, aside from the constant crashes. For some reason, the FPS in the game will not break 60, even using an uncapped frame rate. Fortunately, I found a fix for that completely by accident. In order to get above 60 FPS, you need to do the following. Boot the game, go to the video options, set the frame rate to unlimited, and disable VSync, apply the settings with the start button, open the three dot overlay, set frame rate limit to 60, wait a second, set frame rate limit to off, close the overlay, set the frame rate to 60 FPS and enable VSync, and apply the settings with the start button. It seems to persist through game restarts, but not deck reboots, so if you want more than 60 FPS consistently, you might need to do this on occasion. You will now be getting several hundred frames per second in menus, and can break 60 in-game. I tested this with the baseline as well, so keep that in mind going forward. Let's move on. Now that we have a baseline, the first thing I'd like to do is expand the VRAM to 4GB. If you need help with how to do this, then definitely do check out my video, Easy and Safe Health and Performance Boosts. 
So, I don't think that we've ever seen a performance boost of this magnitude on this channel. We have a 34% and 33% boost to averages on very low and medium settings. The 1% lows are 44% and 22% better as well, which resulted in buttery smooth gameplay. Ultra doesn't see any major boosts as most results are within margin of error, but it has a very small 2 frame boost on the 97th percentile. There's not much else I want to mention for these results alone, but I did want to show off this graph for a second. By expanding the VRAM, it seems that even Ultra doesn't max out the RAM available to it. It appears like the engine will prefer VRAM over RAM and optimize accordingly, explaining some of these results. After that amazing performance boost, I wanted to see what the swap fixes would bring to the table. Needless to say, I was not disappointed. Averages are all within margin of error, but the 97th percentile on very low was raised by 11% to an absolutely insane 114.5 frames per second. The 0.1% lows and 1% lows are 17% and 3% higher on the very low preset. If the VRAM fix gave us buttery gameplay, both of them together gave us the entire Julia child. As we go up the presets, we can see that medium only gets a bump to lows at 8% and 9%, but that's still nothing to scoff at when the lows are that low. The one outlier in this graph was the 97th percentile on Ultra, with a 3% lower result after the swap fix. I don't think anyone would actually play on this preset because of how low the averages are, but it is something to keep in mind. Looking at what the bottleneck might be now, we can see that it's definitely not the CPU, which is barely breaking a sweat and contemplating a short vacation in the Bahamas. GPU core clocks are the best we have for figuring out how hard the GPU is working. We can see that most presets are maxed out at 1600 MHz with quite a few dips, but the very low preset looks like it still has tons of headroom. I also think that those dips can possibly point to an improvement using GPU pinning, so we will definitely be trying that. I won't spend too much time on this, but Forza uses the CPU quite a bit. As such, disabling any cores or disabling SMT really harms performance. We definitely don't want to do this, so let's just move on. Looking into some more interesting results, here I pinned the GPU to 1600 MHz and kept all the previous tweaks aside from disabling SMT. The averages and highs are relatively close, but the 0.1% lows are 35% higher on the very low setting barely dropping under 50 FPS. The 1% lows are 10% higher, also on very low. Using these settings was incredibly smooth and will likely make it into a preset. I also tested FSR a decent amount. These results are in balanced mode, and we can see that the board is very flat, with medium being the exception. The averages and 97th percentile results raised by about 8% and the lows became a little better but the quality trade-off for a few effects didn't really make the game feel any better. As such, I'm going to suggest leaving FSR off unless you're playing on an external display where it might make a larger difference at higher resolutions. As usual, I'll give you a list of the other things I tried to enhance performance here. ZRAM gave identical performance, CPU pinning at 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5 GHz gave worse performance, Tuning the fan curve or locking the fan at 100% made it much louder but gave identical performance, and disabling 2, 4, and 6 CPU cores gave worse performance. Now, on to what everybody's been waiting for, suggested presets. First up is the battery saver preset, where we extend the life of the battery as long as possible without caring what the graphics look like. To make your Steam Deck keep going, and going, and going, like the Energizer Bunny, then do the following. Set your VRAM to 4 gigabytes. Set your swap file to 16 gigabytes and set your swap tendency to 1. In-game, use the native resolution, the very low preset, disable motion blur, and disable all anti-aliasing options. In the deck overlay, cap the FPS at 30, the refresh rate set to 60 Hz, and set a TDP limit of 5 watts. This gave me a total playtime of 3 hours and 14 minutes. Second, we have the smoothest, or fast, preset. The goal here is to prioritize smooth gameplay with graphics being a secondary concern, so we're aiming for a near locked 60. To have your Steam Deck run Forza like it's covered in a non-chloric silicon-based kitchen lubricant, use the following settings. 4GB of VRAM, 
a 16 gigabyte swap file with a swap tendency set to one. In game, use the native resolution, the low preset, disable motion blur, and disable all anti-aliasing options. In the deck overlay, cap the FPS at 60, set the refresh rate to 60 Hz, and pin the GPU at 1600 megahertz. This preset gave me a total playtime of 1 hour and 42 minutes. Third, we have the recommended preset. The goal here is to get the best fidelity we can while also being able to lock the frame rate as high as possible. Reminder that this footage isn't indicative of the frame rate you'll see because my capture setup is prehistoric. To have your cake and eat it too, use the following settings. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file with a swap tendency set to 1, in-game, use the native resolution, medium preset, disable motion blur, and disable all anti-aliasing options. In the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to either 40 or 50 Hz, depending on your preference, and cap the FPS at 40 or 50 Hz, depending on your preference. This preset gave me a total playtime of 2 hours and 3 minutes. Lastly, we have the prettiest preset. The goal here is maximum fidelity with a locked 30 FPS. To make your gameplay look like handsome Squidward, do the following. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file with a swap tendency set to 1. In-game, use the native resolution, high preset, disable motion blur, and enable MSAA times 2. In the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 60Hz and cap the FPS at 30. With this preset, I had a total playtime of 1 hour and 57 minutes. As a summary, we managed to fix the crashing issue, uncap the frame rate, and increase performance by a huge amount. Currently, Forza has a silver on ProtonDB, but I'm confident that it could be a gold if Microsoft fixes the crashing issue. Regardless, by performing these steps, you can have what I consider a gold rating right now, and I consider that to be a major win. As always, please become a like like to siphon all those rupees by pressing the like like button. Subscribe as if you were a scholar in a submarine, scribing subnautically. Tell the bell how you really feel by giving it a ring. And tell me a story using only emoji in the comments below. I will reply with my best bad interpretation of what it could mean. As always, thank you to all of my patrons and all my channel members here on YouTube. Thank you to VV and Eugene Brednev for being members here on YouTube. Thank you to Verge4469, 808, A Zero Fail, Frankie Odgers, Pronesis, Lemon, Brian D, Yi Luo, Pi K, Madam Slug, and Spiffman for being supporters of the channel. Every one of you absolutely rocks, and you're helping me make this content better every day. Alright, that's all from me this time. Thank you all for watching, and have a great day.